So um, I'm here with this uh, BMW 5 Series uh, F10 and uh, we were going to film a different video until we realised that there was a bit of a problem. Um, this laptop was uh, was on the floor down down here. Um, can can you uh, can, can you see the problem? Yeah, there's um, this this wet bit of paper might also explain some things. It's uh, I would call it thoroughly drenched. <laughs> but there you go. Oh dear. Uh, the floor mat is also soaked and uh, we have looked at the bottom of this door and found that the uh, bottom of the door card here is uh, absolutely soaked. Also, this interior of this door seal, the sort of soft one, uh, has well, quite a lot of wetness on the inside of it, not on the outside here, just on the inside of this bit. That absolutely groggy and nasty stuff. Um, so uh, now we are going to diagnose where this is all coming from. But how do you actually diagnose a leak into your car? Well, the first thing is to work out where the water currently is and localize a specific area. If you've got water all over your car, then that's a bit of a bigger problem. There's likely a larger seal like the windscreen or rear windshield. But in our case, the water is only in the rear left part of the passenger footwell. There isn't any water in the, the driver or passenger's front footwells, nor in the rear right footwell either. So we know that the leak or the, the water has come from somewhere in this area, which helps narrow down our search. The next thing that you want to do is try and work out where the water has come from or where the, the fluid has come from. It could be an internal leak or it could be something from the exterior. If it is from the exterior, there are a whole load of different seals that your car uses to keep all your, you know, the exterior rain and water out. And so you might want to check some of those. This is one of the door seals and you want to make sure that it's relatively soft and supple and also that it doesn't feel like it's completely flat and kind of dead. It should have a, a little bit of bounce to it, a little bit of give to it. You should be able to push it in, feel that there's a little bit more room left to go rather than a, a flat pancake of rubber. You'll also want to check for things like rips or tears. We do actually have a, a tiny little rip just by the door latch, but this is uh, both incredibly small and uh, completely dry around here and even uh, inside the, the rubber itself. So I'm fairly certain that's not a problem, but if you have a lot of these sorts of rips, it might be worth replacing that seal anyway, even if that isn't your exact problem. Next, you'll want to work out if there is any water anywhere nearby. So in this case, uh, this AC vent, uh, the, the footwell vent, I checked inside that and I checked under it, even down onto the metal floor below, and there was no water there. There was actually no water anywhere else that we could find. There was a few drops from the rain that we had while we were trying to diagnose this, but I felt around the whole area above where the wet area is, things like by the seat and by the door and the, the B pillar, and even by the center console. And all of it was not only bone dry, but it felt like it had never been wet in its life. Whereas this is literally so much water that I can splash it around in the footwell. This is a considerable amount of fluid for this to have appeared relatively quickly and, you know, have no other obvious signs. You might think that this has come from something like a, a bottle, you know, a passenger left something back here and you know, it's spilt. That is definitely a possibility, although in this case, it might be worth having a quick sniff of the fluid that's in the bag to see if it smells like, in this case, orange or sugar, uh, or, or if it's you know sticky or anything like that. In this case, it smells just like normal water, maybe a little bit moldy since it's you know soaked into the carpet, but uh, it smells just like normal water rather than that Fanta, and so I'm relatively certain that isn't our issue, but it certainly could be, especially with this kind of weird, very localized you know pool of water. Again, I'm searching around for any obvious sources of water, any dampness up from the, the actually wet area. 
including in things like the uh, the seat area and you can actually do a bit more of a sort of I guess invasive diagnosis if you like things like this rear seat are really easy to lift up you basically just pull on them from the front edge and they unclip themselves uh, with a relatively big thud so okay, keep that in mind but it means that you can not only search that area on top of the seats but even get your hand behind the carpet and feel how the the metal of the the bodywork feels uh, even going down towards the wet area to see if it's coming, you know, up from the bottom rather than, you know, ends from one of the seals, for example. You might also want to do a bit of extra, you know, invasive diagnosis, depending on how comfortable you are with taking parts of the car apart. In our case, we actually took the door card off, although uh, one of the other things to check is the seals on the door as well. This was actually relatively nasty, but bear in mind that these seals do kind of double seal. Also, if you happen to have a sunroof, maybe have a look at that one too, because those are really common to, to have leaks and to start, you know, dripping into the car, even in specific spots like this, with no other obvious signs of the, uh, you know, water ingress, for example. Now, like I said, we took the door card off because we actually found a little bit of water on the bottom edge of the door card. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and it's relatively easy to do. It's mostly just a set of clips, and so you'll need some trim tools. But once you have it off, well, in our case, we found that this uh, sort of polystyrene or this open cell foam, uh, which is the, the vapor barrier, was already pulled off or, or sort of pulled away. The glue that's there is very good at sealing, but it seems to have been removed at some point or come apart. Uh, and that may be at least potentially one of the causes of our issues. If you want to check inside the door without taking the door card off though, there is a drain plug on the bottom that we took out and felt and it felt bone dry in there. So I'm relatively confident that it's not coming from this area. Although you can have a look and see on our door card, it's pretty obvious that there is water ingress here. In fact, one of the clips actually broke off because it's basically just kind of like chipboard or MDF back here uh, and it's gotten so wet that the uh, the plastic clip just basically fell off. It's also quite strange in this one because the bottom edge of the door is practically soaked through but the water doesn't get anywhere higher than just that bottom sort of inch of the door. Everywhere else on the, the bottom of the door or the door card is bone dry as if it's never been wet in its life which is a bit of a weird kind of situation to have normally if you have a leak you know if it's coming from the the door seals or from the the window seals or whatever and it's actively you know filling up you would have water all across this there would be evidence of this sort of breakdown happening across the entire door card but in our case it seems to just be almost wicking up from the inside this door card is relatively damaged and will likely need replacing at some point, but since we couldn't find any obvious issues, we decided to reseal the uh, sort of uh, vapor barrier, uh, which you can just use something like a hairdryer in its high setting to reactivate that glue. And once it's nice and hot and tacky, you can then press it back into place and that will stick down quite nicely. We made sure to do that on all of the sides and then we basically just mopped up all of the water that's in here. We used a couple of tea towels at first to, to get everything soaked up and then the hairdryer again just to give that extra bit of, uh, of drying action. Now this isn't obviously a conclusive diagnosis as like I said we couldn't work out where the, uh, the water was coming from and so uh, this is a, a partial video if you like uh, but Hopefully that's a, a little look at how you might diagnose uh, when you find water in your car, how to work out where it's coming from and some of the actions you might want to do to remedy that. In our case, it's more of a uh, kind of just stand back and observe. We're going to uh, see how it plays out over the next few weeks, especially with the inclement weather that's coming in. And then we'll see if it appears wet again in the near future. We know that it, there is something we need to, to work out further. But if it stays dry, then it's a, uh, a bit of a, a freak accident, if you like. It might have been a spillage by a passenger that just wasn't you know, noticed or at the time. Uh, so, yeah, that's a bit of a look at uh, 
how, how to diagnose a, a leaky car. Uh, if you have any of your own suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one or plenty of other guides and uh, even full car reviews, you can check them out on the channel on the end cards and of course hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Hope you uh, can persevere through my uh, very um, nasally voice as uh, I have a bit of a cold. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it nonetheless and we'll see you on the next video.